Hi, it's good to be with you. I wish we could do this in person, but with all that's going on, we want to be sure to safeguard everyone's health and to do what we can in preventing the spread of uh, the coronavirus. But let's take a few minutes uh, to just uh, hear from God's Word today and to focus on what this season of Lent is all about. I want to start by saying how glad I am and Mindy uh, to be here with you and part of the Park Place family now. And we look forward to many days and times together and, and serving the kingdom here in Anderson. Today our scripture is found in the Gospel of John in the fourth chapter. And what this passage does is kind of help us understand what this season of Lent is all about. That in the midst of the busyness and the distractions and in all the things of life, we can kind of lose sight of what is most important, what is at the center, the center of our life, our faith, and, and what Christ is all about. And today's story in the Gospel of John focuses on who Jesus is and what Jesus wants to do in each and every one of our lives as we hear about this story of Jesus meeting the woman at the well. I want to encourage you to maybe take your own Bible or if you're with your family, uh, read this yourselves. But listen now as I read from John 4 verses 7 and following. A Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone on into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask of me, a woman of Samaria, for a drink. For Jews did not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. What do you get? Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up and to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming back here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim to us all things. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But one said, what do you want? Why are you speaking with her? And so the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. And she said to the people, Come and see a man who has told me everything that I have done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? When they left the city, they were on their way to him. I want to share with you in the next few minutes just some things for you to think about and, and to kind of reflect on in this season of Lent. 
about who Jesus is and what Jesus uh, wants to do in each and every one of our lives. First thing I would encourage you is to notice the distance that happens in this story. Let me set the scene for you a little bit. In the ancient biblical world of Palestine, there were divided into three primary regions, Judah in the south, Galilee in the north, and Samaria in the center. Jesus in this story was in the southern part, in southern Palestine and Judea, and was traveling north to Galilee. Now, persons in his day who were Jews would have intentionally bypassed, gone around Samaria. But Jesus is going through. And during this time, and for a very long period of time, the Jewish people and Samaritans wouldn't exactly get along with one another. There would be a lot of that us and them, those and they. And in the midst of that, we find in the story the, the woman recognizing as she says to Jesus, you are a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. Why are you asking me for a drink? We notice already there's this kind of distance uh, because of the ethnic differences and the historical differences between Jesus and this woman at the well. But there was not only that kind of distance, there was more to it. Remember the context, the backdrop, it is that Jacob's well. You see, this well would have been outside the city in which the woman lived, of Sakar. We need to notice that it also happens in the middle of the day. You see, this woman had purposely chosen a well kind of outside her community in the middle of the day, which would not have been a normal time to, to go and get water. That would have happened early in the morning. This woman was intentionally trying to go and get water for herself and her household at a time in which no one would be around when no one would notice. Also just kind of keeping a distance. You see, most likely this woman was trying to go unseen, hidden, unnoticed by others. Most likely she was an outsider, living on the margins of her community. Why? Well, most likely it could have been of her life condition. Maybe a sense of shame, guilt, emptiness, feeling that maybe she wasn't worthy to go and get water where others would most likely get it or at a time when others would. There was this great distance. Jesus hits that head on when he says in verse 16, Go, call your husband. What this woman represents is Often in our own lives, there are things about us, situations we've gone through, things we've had to endure, things that were in our own mind and hearts where we just maybe want to kind, kind of keep people, life, at a distance, where we want to kind of be hidden, unnoticed, not recognized by others. That's the context of this story. A woman, for whatever reason, who feels distanced, distance from her community, distance from those around her, distance maybe even from God. That's often what our brokenness, uh, our woundedness, the troubles, the struggles, regrets, the things of life can leave us with, uh, feeling like we are kind of at arm's length from other people, other situations and things around us, and even God. That's the context, that's the backdrop of this story, this woman who feels distanced from life and God. When have you ever felt that way? Maybe now, maybe at some other time or point in your own life where you just felt hidden, unnoticed. Maybe because of your own brokenness or woundedness, just kind of feeling at arm's length from people around you, maybe even God. It is in that context, it, it is in that situation uh, that the real highlight, the point, the emphasis of the story comes to us because we're not only to notice the distance of this woman, but the action that Jesus takes. And what I want you to recognize, to notice, to pay attention, especially in this Lenten season from this story, is how Jesus enters her struggle and ours. Jesus says there in John 4, 16, go and call your husband. 
Jesus, at this point, is not trying to be offensive or invasive. He simply wants to address the reality and the real issue within this woman's life. He wants to speak to her real needs. And he desires to confront and restore the broken parts of her life. You see, that's what I really love about this story, uh, to see how Jesus addresses the real issue head on. Go call your husband and come back. Jesus confronts the broken and disordered life of this woman, and he enters her reality. He desires to get involved. Jesus does not want to keep at a safe distance, to keep her at arm's length. No, Jesus' desire is to enter her world, her situation, her needs. You see, this story teaches us that Jesus views this woman and her needs as an opportunity to reveal who he is, the living water, the Messiah, the Savior. But not at an arm's length, not at a distance, but engaged and involved in the reality, even the brokenness and the woundedness of her life. You see, that's the good news, that Jesus loves us and enters our life, not in spite of our brokenness, in spite of our woundedness, but just because of that. It is because of that distance and the things in our life that Jesus desires to come and to enter into our reality, our world, our issues. Here's the point. You see, God finds us worthy of his love and God's concern for us, not in spite of our ruin, but exactly because of it. God values and loves us and actively wants to enter into the reality of our life, even our wounds and brokenness and the things of life that want to distance us, to show us that he is with us. That's what it really means that Jesus wants to address the real issues and needs of our lives to both confront those and to restore those. That's what this story is showing us. The Savior, Jesus, who is at the center and wants to enter into our lives and, and be involved in our lives. You've maybe heard the story before that was told a number of years ago in London there, the London Transit Authority was, the buses were passing people that were standing at bus stops. And they got a lot, of course, complaints and people uh, wondering what was going on. And the London Transit Authority issued this official statement in the newspapers. It read, it is impossible for us to maintain our schedule if we are always having to stop and pick up passengers. They missed the whole point. What had become more important for their bus drivers was the schedule rather than the people that were to be riders and passengers in the bus. Our lives, our world, our society can so often end up like that. We miss. We miss what the whole point is. We sometimes miss it about faith. May we in this season be reminded what it is all about, what faith in Jesus is all about. The hope of a Savior who enters our reality, not in spite of our brokenness and wounds, but because of them. That when you and I feel distance, cut off from others and people and life and maybe even God, there is one who more than anything else wants to enter our hearts and our lives, our realities, and show us God's love. Last thing I want you to notice from this passage today is this, is how it ends. You see, I don't want you to miss for a moment the transformation that happens in this woman's life. Look with me if you still have your Bibles. I hope you do. Look right at verse 28, because something kind of interesting happens. There at verse 28, the text says that she leaves her water jar and goes back to the town and says to the people. Notice this simple action that she leaves the jar, the very reason, the point that she had come to the well to begin with, suddenly becomes 
inconsequential. It no longer matters because she has experienced the life, the living water of Jesus. And suddenly the daily routine and the necessity of even water becomes a secondary to the hope that she experiences in her heart. The woman says, I have experienced Messiah. And Jesus says, I who speak to you am he. Notice how this woman who had been the outsider now becomes the insider. She leaves with the gift of God's life and love. She is filled with living water and leaves her water jar. She moves from hiding to now inviting people. Come, come and see the one who has told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? And it says the whole town comes out and makes their way towards him. That's our hope too. That we, like this woman, can move from where we are hiding to experiencing the hope of Jesus where we turn to others and say, come and see. To experience the reality of transformation where our lives suddenly find center, meaning, hope, life, where we come to be filled with living water. You see, in this Lenten season, it calls us in the midst of our distractions and busyness, where we might miss or lose focus of what life, what faith is all about. Today's story wonderfully reminds us about who Jesus is, the living water, and how he wants to enter, fill our hearts and lives so that we can be transformed, made new, and to move from the hiddenness and the distance of our life to experience the hope and the closeness of the love in the life of Jesus. May you today come to experience anew and afresh that living water. Hey, thanks so much for taking a few minutes of your time and your busy schedule to hear these words. And I want to encourage you to return back to the story and allow them to speak to your heart and to your life. I want to encourage you in these days and in this season of Lent to focus about who Jesus is and what he wants to do as we recenter our lives on him. And in the midst of these uncertain, crazy days with all that is going on, may we continually look to God who provides, who is our strength, our help, and our healer. I want to mention to you as a church, we'll do our very best in the days ahead to communicate and keep you clear about our schedule and what is happening in the life of the church as we deal with the kind of adjusting of our schedules and time and church times. We thank you so much. May the Lord be with you and bless you today.